Good evening. It is September 25th. Welcome to the Red Hook Town Board meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for coming to this second meeting of the month. Um, we'll move right into announcements followed by public comment, and then we'll have a presentation by a regional representative of New York State Office of Real Property Tax, and her name is Victoria, um, don't say it. <laughs> Costello. Got it. Okay. So, first announcements. Sue has the abstract <coughs> from the month of July to read, please. This is July 2013 abstract. It's vouchers number 16425 through 16527. Out of the general A fund, $43,027.04. The general B fund, $17,377.38. From the Highway DB, $18,262.52. Um, PDR, $2,038.75. Capital Improvement, Sism Road, Sism Road Bridge, $2,750.10. Capital Improvement, Highway Garage, $250. Lighting District, $2,084.91. Water, O&M, $4,813.67. For a total abstract of $90,604.37. I hereby certify that the voucher numbered 16425 through 16527 processed in the month of July 2013 are an accurate recording of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. So we can't talk about Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. And for announcements, uh, you have a couple of yes, announcements, I do. Harry? Yes. Um, the Rotary Club, as many of you will know out there in TV land, uh, and has an, a Citizen of the Year Award, and this year it will be Ruth O.J. And, in, and I'll read this announcement. We're proud to announce that Ruth O.J. is the recipient of this year's prestigious Red Hook Rotary uh, Citizen of the Year Award. She has worked tirelessly to preserve our environment and is a model for good citizenship. She's dedicated herself to making her town a better place. This is the 13th Citizen of the Year celebration uh, done by the Rotary Club uh, in town here. Um, there will be a dinner roast on Tuesday, October 22nd at 615 at the Red Hook Firehouse on Firehouse Lane. It'll be catered by the O'Hans. Tickets are just $40 per person, and they may be purchased from any member of the Rotary. I happen to be one, and I, but I don't have any tickets at the moment. I will have shortly. And they'll be available from the town clerk and the Red Hook Village clerk. And as I say, they were $40 each. And we look for, uh, look for you, to, you out there to participate. And I have another fun announcement. Being a Tivoli resident, I get, I get to announce this. On October 5th, that's a week from Saturday, so you will all have seen this on Pander by then, Tivoli has its annual street painting uh, a day. On Saturday, October 5th, starting at 9 in the morning, it is totally free. Uh, the chalk is free. Um, the entertainment is free. There'll be music. And if you're doing, if you're doing a, a picture, you'll get some free snacks. And it is a great, f fun day. Broadway is closed, and it turns into <coughs> one big slate board uh, with uh, kids of all ages, from, from two years to 200. <laughs> so if you want to have some fun, um, 9 o'clock on October 5th in Tivoli. Thanks. Thank you, Harry. And I have only two. One is in reference to a letter from Dutchess County Community Action Agency 
CEO Elizabeth Spira, who reminds us at budget time every year uh, how important our support is of Dutchess Community Action Agency. And I just wanted to remind the residents that as we wrestle with budget allocations that um, this is what, on average, every dollar we invest leverages $30 of services for those in need. Um, the specific services include uh, support to frail and elderly citizens at risk of losing the ability to meet their basic needs, food, clothing, and shelter. And um, they distribute food to the hungry, health and wellness support with prescription assistance, and wraparound resources to support frail and elderly, as I said. So it's a very important uh, countywide agency, and we <coughs> support them as we are able through our budget. But um, I know that they are looking for support from other organizations as well. So. Um, we ask for you, your consideration for Dutchess County Community Action Agency Partnership. We are at the happy crossroads tonight of being able to announce the appointment of Scott Hobson to full-time assessor for a six-year term. He has been filling an unexpired term with us since our last assessor retired, and this will be his first full term appointment of his very own. And we congratulate you and thank you for accepting the terms and conditions and being willing to work with us in the year ahead. The role of assessor is one that has got to be complex in, in so many ways that many of us don't understand but its importance should not be understated that that the value of that the entire town as an as an entity um, is based resides from the work done in that office and insofar as our borrowing power when we need to borrow it's important for, for us to get it right and that the values are real that people feel there's equity, there's, there's a, a fairness between property owners and property <coughs> parcels, and it's a struggle, I'm sure, on an hourly and daily basis to stay on top of it. We try our best to support that office, and again, I congratulate you, Scott, the town board, unanimously agreed to appoint you for that 12-year term. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, so generally now what we ask for is public comment. If there are things that are of concerning to you that you would like to get off your chest right out in front at the first part of the meeting, now's a good time to do it. You can also wait and see items on the agenda. There will be another public comment toward the end of the evening when you can comment on business that we have done, but uh, most people have other things to do, so they like to do it right up front in the beginning of the meeting. So is there any public comment? Yes. Would you please state your name before your issue? Thank you, Linda. Hi, Linda Keeling, Town of Red Book. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you will be commenting on the letter that I wrote uh, about two weeks ago regarding an incident involving my property. If that's at the end on the correspondence, it, it is in our hands. Okay. It is not on the agenda tonight. Will it be next month or um, October 8th? We're, as you can see, two hands short tonight. We, right. have, we have two town board mes members who are not here tonight. And I think that we will probably look at that together when we're all here. Okay. So are you asking to have it an um, um, item on the agenda for October 5th? Oh, October 5th? Is October 5th October would be the meeting. next full meeting. Eighth, or, eighth, I'm eighth. sorry, 8th. Or I'll be here, I'll be at the, yeah. Okay. How about yeah. the corresponding meeting on the 4th Wednesday of October, yeah. which would correspond to this? All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it then. Thank, Thank you. you. That'll give us all a chance to wrestle with your issues. It will take a while, yeah. yes. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay. So that date is October 23rd. Okay. And it's a zoning issue, right? Okay. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Um, we were approved by the planning board for a, sub, a small subdivision, two-lot subdivision, and um, we recently found out that the water line that we are required to put in has to be has to be copper. The cost of the copper pipe is estimated at fifteen thousand dollars, which is exorbitant. Um, a lot of municipalities are changing to poly polyethylene, which is much less expensive. Um, and I would there. I have talked to the, to the water department, Hank Van Perry's, and he said that there is no grievance process for this issue. And I'm here to ask <laughs> ask your help. On how do we um, consider changing that policy? Most municipalities are, are have, have both a copper and poly uh, available. They give usually the homeowners an, an, an option. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of research on this. Um, the copper is, is a joint every 100 feet. The poly is every 500 feet. So the chance of leaking is a lot more, very much larger with the copper because of the joints. And, and the cost is exorbitant. And um, I've talked to a couple of municipalities. I spoke to the town of LaGrange, who recently, within the last few years, changed to poly because they were finding that the new copper Type K copper has, has been defective. They, she said the last, it, well, they lasted, copper lasted about three years. And she said that when they pulled it out, it looked like Swiss cheese. So the quality of the copper is not like it used to be years ago. So I just wanted to um, see if there's a possibility if maybe mm -hmm. the town engineer could look at this and mm -hmm. maybe um, for the availability of poly to, to, to all of us. Right. Including the town, if something ha happened to, you know, right. to change for the town. Right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it forward. Um, I'm going to defer to you. What would the, what steps do we need to take to bring that to the consideration of the board? Is it is it our business to do that, or is it the water board's? It, 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 I mean, it is, uh, but I think that it would probably ordinarily be something you refer to the water board, ask their okay. advice and counsel, and okay. perhaps also ask your engineer for uh, recommendation um, and the Department of um, Health, uh, which oversees water issues in the county and then you know with that information then maybe you could uh, consult and reach a decision about that and they see it is a it is, I'm sorry it's a regulation or a policy uh, that is in the water boards um, adopted uh, uh, procedures for new uh, service lines this is a service line yes to the property okay right. and they I'm sorry, there's no alternative to copper in the current standards set by the water board. So right. it's a change in the adopted procedures of the water board. Right. And, mm -hmm. and is that a town board decision? Town board decision. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we, def if we refer to them by written mm -hmm. memo that this is a consideration we'd like them to weigh in on, mm -hmm. and they write back and say we have no problem with poly and or copper, mm -hmm. um, you would then do a procedural change for the water district? Right. Is, for the water, is, yeah, okay. for the water district procedures for the, uh, they have uh, policy procedures and regulations for their um, installations. Okay. Um, there's always, always certain standards that are required. I mean, okay. I don't think this is in the local law itself. I think this is in the, in the um, uh, water board. So it's okay. a water district. Policy policy district, district right. Strictly, yeah. Could I ask you to contact the a representative sure. of the water board. I don't want to be in the middle of it because if you're going to be the one to write what the procedure is, it would make sense for you to talk with them first and bring it to us maybe at the next meeting if that's possible. Okay. And, also or, with the engineer, and consult with the engineer right. and, and come back to us either the 8th or the 23rd. Very good. Okay. And, I'm sorry for that. Oh, and they have in their report for the month too that they're. Um, We'll consider it again, changing their rules and regs. So, okay. Good. 
what they're thinking yes. about it. Further I've, discussion. So. I've done a lot of research. Could I give this to someone? Yes, please. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be wonderful. And I have more yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give it to the clerk, and then we'll get a copy. Okay. Make sure to get a copy to the water board, and then also to me. Sure. Okay. Okay. That way. Thank you. Sue is, Sue by is the, way, the keeper of all records. And I have Polly at point. <laughs> Thank you very, <laughs> very much, Mary Beth, for bringing that forward. Okay. Is there any further public comment? Hearing none, let's move right into the first item on the agenda, which is a uh, description of an explanation of the STAR registration program from New York State Office of Real Property Tax. And Victoria Costello is here as our regional representative to talk with us about this. There's been, it's been in the paper, but we're very happy to have you here. Thank you for coming, Victoria. Um, first, I'd like to thank you for giving us the time to do this. And um, I'm going to go through a very brief PowerPoint presentation. The PowerPoint presentation is available on the county website. Uh, Scott had posted it out there. Um, I would, after I've gone through the presentation, I will be happy to take uh, a few questions, um, but I would like to keep them at a general level. If anybody had a very specific question, um, I will wait outside and you can um, ask me that so that I don't take more time than necessary. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, the recent re legislation has um, required that all recipients of basic STAR exemption re-register with the Department of Tax and Finance. This does not affect people who are currently receiving enhanced STAR. Those individuals will do what they always have done. Some may be in the IVP program, <coughs> which is the income, ver income verification program, and some are going into the assessor's office every year and reapplying. So if you have enhanced STAR, you do what you always have. If you have basic STAR, you need to listen to, to me now. Um, the program applies to approximately 2.6 million people in the state, so it is a massive undertaking by the state to make sure that everybody re-registers. Um, the purpose of the program is to um, make sure that only people who uh, are eligible for the basic star actually receive it. It is also designed to eliminate intentional fraud and unintentional duplicate exemptions. Um, this happens, some people intentionally have two residents apply in both places. There are also instances where uh, someone may have had a basic star in a current re residence, moved on to a different residence, and maybe are now renting their prior rent and didn't realize they needed to um, pull it off. So it's to get rid of both intentional and unintentional duplicates. Uh, the general process is that the Department of Tax and Finance has collected the assessment rules, the final assessment rules for 2013 from all municipalities in the state. We then have um, assigned what is known as a star code to each recipient, each basic star exemption in each property. That information is sent in an individual letter to each property owner, and it, the letter includes the star code and how to re register with the Department of Tax. You have the option of calling, calling us at 518-457-2036, or you can visit our website at www.tax.ny.gov. Um, the online registration program process will only take, uh, I think it only takes two or three minutes. I personally have not done mine yet, <laughs> but um, I, my understanding is it only takes a couple minutes. Um, you will go to our web page and there is a prominent link on the home page of the tax department and you just follow that. It will take you to a page that gives you an overview of the program and then it gives you um, a place to enter the star code that's on your letter. It will then display your property address as confirmation that the star code is matching up to your property. You will then proceed to enter the names and social security numbers of all owners of the properties and their spouses. So whether the spouse is an owner or not, you still need to enter their information. You will then be asked to um, answer a couple questions. First, they want to know if it's your primary residence. And second, they want to know if um, anybody who is a resident of that property is receiving a residency-based exemption in another state. Uh, for this area, the most obvious one would be um, the homestead exemption in Florida. Uh, many people are snowbirds and go back and forth, so if you have a residency-based exemption in another state, you would need to give us that information as well. You are then asked to uh, verify the income of the owners and spouses. You'll be asked to confirm that 
the adjusted gross income is less than $500,000 for the, both the owner and their spouse. You will then be asked to provide basic contact information and um, click on a certification that uh, click on a certification that the information is accurate and correct, and then you're done. Uh, the overall registration schedule is uh, began in August of this year. That's when the first batch of letters went on out. Most of the letters have been sent out by now. Uh, the exception at this point is that um, some of the um, downstate, more New York City area have not all gotten their letters, and some of the mobile, um, if you live in a mobile home park, not all of those letters have gone out yet. But those should be going out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, on December 1st, another a second batch of letters will be sent out. Those are letters will be sent to those people we have not heard from that have not registered as a reminder. The deadline for registering is December 31st. Um, and in March 1st, we'll be sending letters, uh, we'll be sending a list to the local assessor of those people that they need to remove the basic star exemption for. In that period, however, though, if you are on that list to be removed, you will get a separate letter from the tax department uh, informing you that you do have an appeals process. Um, and what you would do is you would just call our number, um, and they will ask whatever missing information there is, because uh, you could be denied for several reasons. One, you didn't register. Um, you might, um, there might be an error in the way, you might, it might appear that you have a duplicate exemption where you may not. Um, so whatever the case may be, you'll have an appeals process. You do not have an appeals process through the local assessor. If the Department of Tax instructs Scott to remove the exemption, he has to remove it. He does not have an option not to. So any, if you do not feel, you, if you are removed and do not feel it's justified, you need to go through us. When we settle it with you, the uh, <coughs> tax department will let Scott, will allow Scott to reinstate it, but it has to be through us. Um, if for some reason you don't receive a letter or have received it and didn't recognize it and thrown it away because it's addressed to property owner, so it can, it's, it's not obvious. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not as obvious as it would appear to be, but... If for some reason you don't, when you're on the website, there is a, uh, there is a link to, um, to an area called Star Code Lookup, and you would just go to, click on that part, it asks you for your name, address, and it will generate a, um, it, it'll pop up the star code for you, and then you can proceed with the rest of the um, registration. I'm sorry, and the website is? www.tax.ny.gov. I'm learning my own address now. <laughs> um, and let's see where else we got. Um, and as far as new star applicants, um, if you uh, have just purchased your home and you would be applying for a basic star exemption for the first time for um, roll year 2014, um, you would have to go to Scott like you always have. Um, if, if even if you receive a letter from us as property owner, you still need to apply with Scott as well. Uh, we will be, uh, in next year, you'll get a second letter from us. It's a little complicated. Next year, we'll get a, a second letter from us telling all new star recipients that they need to register with us and go through this process next year. But, so if you bought your home recently, go to Scott and apply for the basic star, even if you have gotten a letter telling you to register. <laughs> uh, and I think that's pretty much covers almost everything that we have here. If um, anybody has a basic question um, about the process, fairly simple and straightforward. If, if a homeowner were to have a change in status from being eligible for enhanced STAR at one point mm -hmm. and lose that eligibility because of inheritance or whatever, whatever that reason may be, um, they then need to re-register. Um, if, Even though it do, they will not be notified this if year. They are not el if they received an enhanced star last year and mm -hmm. for some reason will not be eligible next year, they'll be treated as new applicants. So they would need to apply um, with Scott. But Scott would normally know that because he would normally have received mm -hmm. the enhanced and said that we need to make you a basic ex exemption. However, if you are currently receiving a basic exemption and you think you may be eligible for an enhanced star for the first time next year, I, we recommend that you still register as the basic star and then give your application for the enhanced star to Scott for, let him, for him to process. Okay. 
Well, it's an important um, it's an important registration, as best we all can tell, sitting on our side. And we ho we thank you for drawing it to everyone's attention because the savings to taxpayers is huge if they do qualify. So yes. we don't want anybody to miss it. So right. please look for your letters if you think you may have thrown it away. Call the number or. Um, Go onto the website and look for your star lookup code. It's okay, and we'll have these um, pamphlets that you oh, brought with right. you um, they, here. I put them out on next to the clerk's um, mm -hmm. window where the other pamphlets are. There's good. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of them up there, and I have some right here if anybody wants me to. Okay, good. And I have some in my office as well. Oh, you do too. Okay. okay. And okay, thank you again great. for your time. Thank you, Victoria, so much. You've been a huge help to us. Okay, we have next on the agenda an array of resolutions that start with um, <clears throat> advertising the request for sealed bids for the purchase of ice control abrasives and the request for sealed bids for hot mix asphalt and a request for proposals for various materials and services for the highway department for 2014. Um, now, I'm going to have to have some help with this. Do we need to read these bid specifications or just refer to them? No, they're just referred to ordinarily. Okay. Um, they go through a bidding procedure on the two types of materials where they purchase more than a certain amount every year, a large amount every year, and then for the rest of them, they use an RFP process to request uh, proposals. Okay. So um, we have three bid specifications that are of concern tonight. One is sealed proposals for Highway Department 2014 materials and services. And all proposals should be received by 2 p.m. on Thursday, October 24th, 2013 at the Red Hook Town Hall by the town clerk. And Mm -hmm. There are also sealed bids expected for hot mix asphalt for the same time frame. They are due back at or before 2 p.m. on Thursday, October 24th, 2013. And likewise for um, the Highway Department 2014 ice control abrasives 2014. And they too, it's the date is... 2 p.m. Thursday, October 24th. So the resolution reads as follows. Dated September 25th, 2013, resolution authorizing the town clerk to advertise a request for sealed bids for the purchase of ice control abrasives, a request for sealed bids for hot mix asphalt, and a request for proposals for various materials and services. Whereas the highway superintendent of the town of Red Hook has requested that the town proceed with advertising for highway materials and services required for 2014, including requests for sealed bids for ice control abrasives, two requests for sealed bids for hot mix asphalt, and three requests for proposals for various materials and services, in each case pursuant to spe specifications substantially in the form on file with the town clerk, now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Red Hook does hereby authorize and direct the town clerk to advertise for requests for sealed bids and a request for proposals as directed by the highway superintendent in accordance with the foregoing specifications. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion regarding the resolution? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The second? Hmm? Did you have something? No, I just want to ask Teresa if on that um, the 
services and various materials. Did there? Did you mean to include tree removal services because it because it's not on the chart? It's not on the chart. No, no there is. Oh yeah, it's on the back page. It is. Yeah. Not on my well, on the um, let's see, on the bid proposal form, I do see it in there. Not too many forms. I, know, which is no. <clears throat> I have a two double sided copy of the big proposal form, and on the back side, the tree removal bone truck operators on there. Is that? Yes. Okay. Didn't all fit on the same. Yeah, I, I don't see, actually, Brenda, is the notice of invitation for proposals. Oh, hourly, daily, and weekly rates for bone truck and operators for tree removal. Yeah, I do see it there. So, so Chris, you have a double-sided printed, Here. and and yeah. oh, like ah, somebody copied tree that. removal is the second page. <laughs> the back page. Uh, you Here's don't have you don't have a page that follows the list. Yeah. I have this chart. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. No, right yeah. there. This yeah. is the front chart. Here, she doesn't have it. Here. Oh. She doesn't have this page. Okay. Well, that page is here. I don't know. That's why. the back yeah. of this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're okay? Yeah. I'm okay. Fine. Very good. The second resolution Resolution approving the application of Winnicke Land Trust for a Green Conservancy grant for promoting, planning, and acquiring trails and trail easements for Red Hook Townwide Trails. Whereas the Winnicky Land Trust is applying to the Hudson River Valley Greenway Conservancy for a $4,000 grant under the 2013 Greenway Conservancy Small Grant Program for a program entitled the Red Hook Townwide Trails Outreach to be located in the town of Red Hook, New York. And whereas this grant will fund the writing, publishing, and disseminating of a campaign to promote townwide trails and educate residents on the benefits of extensive connecting trail systems as well as personal outreach to specific landowners regarding important trail connections. And whereas the Town of Red Hook Trails Committee is dedicated to establishing trails connecting schools, parks, and residential areas, and to exploring trail connections to larger regional trail system. Whereas the grant application requires the applicant municipality or not-for-profit to obtain the approval endorsement of the governing body of that municipality or municipalities in which the project is located. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook hereby does approve and endorse the application for a grant under 2013 Greenway Conservancy for Hudson River Valley Greenway Annual Grant Program for a project known as the Red Hook Townwide Trails and located within this community. And I so move. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, just that we really appreciate that they're doing this for us and they'll um, provide us with uh, 50 copies of a map. They're going to do a booklet for outreach uh, and they're going to pursue um, helping us do some of our connectivity for the existing trails. They're especially interested in uh, connections to schools and parks and uh, connecting populated areas to, to uh, those facilities. So we thank them very much. Good. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And um, I wonder if the town clerk could forward that to Lucy Hayden at, sure. at uh, <coughs> Winnicky tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The third resolution is establishing a date for a public hearing regarding the 2014 Community Development Block Grant application. Whereas the town is considering submission of a 2014 Community Development Block Grant application regarding the construction of a sidewalk along the east side of South Broadway in the town with a maximum grant to be applied for of $150,000. And now therefore be it resolved by the town board of the town of Red Hook. Um, the town clerk is here at uh, the favorable vote, not less than a majority of all the members of the board as follows. The town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish a notice of public hearing regarding the proposed application for 2014 Community Development Block Grant in the Poughkeepsie Journal and the Kingston Freeman, the official newspapers of said town, on or before September 28, 2013, 
which is not less than 10 days prior to the date of said public hearing. The town board shall hold a public hearing on October 8, 2018 at 8.45 p.m. in Town Hall, 2340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, to hear all interested parties on said 2014 Community Development Block Grant application. And I so move. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that public hearing will occur. There are several public hearings that night, and that one will be at 845. Now we have the great honor and privilege of having his honor here to talk about a grant application to the, for the Red Hook Justice Court to New York State Court. Well, thank you, Madam Supervisor, you. members of the board. It's a pleasure and honor to be here this evening for the sixth consecutive year to apply for a Justice Court Administration Program grant. As you uh, know, first, before I, I get into the uh, substance of the grant, uh, Judge Martin very much wished he could be here tonight. He sends his regrets. He did have child care responsibilities this evening. Um, we have obtained for the Red Hook Courts over $65,000 in the past six years uh, for grants, for capital expenditures, and for equipment such as computers, printers, photocopiers, even the painting of this courtroom, uh, all done uh, without direct expense to local taxpayers. And today, I come before you asking for a resolution to give us authorization to apply for another grant. Uh, in this instance, we're going to seek funding to replace the uh, air conditioning, heating, ventilation system uh, in uh, the town hall, especially the courtroom area, uh, because it has become pretty much non-functional. As you can appreciate, Madam Supervisor, members of the board, when we have court, this room is filled uh, to the brim with people. And all that body heat uh, does raise the temperature of the building. Um, and we very often have held court where it climbs up to the high 70s and low 80s inside the room because the air conditioner can no longer keep up. It's the original air conditioning, as far as I know, uh, with the building of the uh, town hall. And so um, we have a quote from uh, Crawford and Associates Engineering to pretty much replace all the bits and pieces and that will come to a total of $29,000. And we're asking the Justice Court Administration Program to provide that funding rather than uh, assess local taxpayers. In addition, after we cool the air here, we're going to dehumidify the air in the basement where our records are stored. The court is required to keep records upwards of 50 years. And uh, they are stored in the basement here at uh, Town Hall. And uh, the, it does need to be dehumidified preserve those paper records. So we're going to ask for um, $350 for a dehumidifier, a, a high-grade commercial dehumidifier rather than something that you might get from Sears Roebuck for your home. And uh, finally, uh, we do need a, a new shredder. That uh, is the least expensive item at $130. So uh, with your kind permission and with approving the resolution, we can send this up to Albany tonight and hopefully get a check within six months. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board or members of the public may have. Well, the first comment I would like to make is to thank you again this year for your diligence in pursuing these fundings that are available only to through your office. And um, having written grants and uh, been through that process, I know that it's time consuming and detailed, and I appreciate the time you have spent doing it. Thank it you very much. Thank and I, you. I should say, Madam Supervisor, I want to thank uh, members of the uh, town staff who assisted um, Deb Kuhn, our business manager, um, my court clerks, Kathy Fell, and Nancy Roberts, and of course, our very fine town attorney, Chris Shaw who uh, every year has reused the, uh, the paperwork I hand in, and since she didn't say I did it wrong, it must be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it your intention to read the proposal, or your descriptive uh, narration is enough? Well, I it's, hope it's enough. It's, it's enough for me. <laughs> There's is a lot of whereas is and wherefore is it. Does the, yes, there is. It, 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 does the board have any other questions, or any questions that haven't been answered by his description of what's going on here? It is true that this room has 
been uh, heated and air cooled for probably more than 20 years by the same system, and it's probably groaning. And uh, we really appreciate the help in, well, in this you, infrastructure. If you read the uh, engineer's report, it says quite clearly, without any uh, trigger coating, that it's at the end of its useful lifespan. Right. So we've got to do something. I'd much rather, much rather do it with what we call OPM financing, other people's money, as in uh, <laughs> the state court grant. And it's there. If we don't take advantage of it, somebody else will. So I'm very happy to be able to uh, send this proposal up to all of it. No, thank you very much. I so move. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I'm going to pen. I sign here. Yes. This is for Jeff, is it not? No, well, only one of us have to sign us so all. Okay. Set it up is, is, okay. So right. you want my signature Please. down here? At the end of the resolution, and mm -hmm. I will zip in here, make copies, and take it over to the stamp machine. Post and we'll post office. It, take it right to the post office tonight. Good. Thank you so very much, My pleasure. Judge Tripwasser. Thank you. We appreciate it. Right. You just need to sign this one as well. You have to sign the resolution. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Okay, next on the agenda is, is a simple authorization of um, a conveyor controlled sander body for truck 20. And um, I just needed a word of explanation from Teresa about this before I put it on the agenda. Uh, so, so I had a chance to speak to her about it. While it wasn't identified, I don't think, in, specifically in the budget, there is money in the budget for it. Is that correct? So um, this is the description. We have one truck with computerized controls and we have found significant savings in sand and salt use during the winter plowing season. The estimated cost for the retrofit of the truck is between four and $6,000. The past year, we purchased a chipper with Mylan. The budgeted cost was 18,000. By purchasing used chipper instead of new, we saved 8,005. This amount combined with money from the fund, the highway department fund equipment line would cover the cost of the new sander and controls. And so you have my blessing and I'm sure the boards. Is anyone any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Teresa, for that request. The next thing on the agenda is a brief discussion, if we could have it, on what can be uh, a complicated issue, but I think this one is pretty straightforward. This is um, a discussion revolving around the, the dental um, insurance plan that the town subscribes for uh, town employees. And heretofore, we have used the plan called Guardian Dental and have been relatively happy with it. Its, its coverage is, is uh, reasonable. And um, we decided this year to take a look because we changed health care uh, insurance last year and enjoyed significant savings by changing from um, M A MVP to CDPHP. We asked our provider if there were a comparable dental plan with CDPHP and they provided it for us, which you have in front of you. And while they are not identical in coverage, uh, there's, there's a slight difference in the way each of them cover, there are some very real benefits with our following our CDPHP um, choice in health care uh, insurance. Largely, the annual maximum coverage is $500 more than the one we have been paying for. Um, there is a different constellation of payments depending on the family plan. 
and it appears that there might be better coverage for people who have either a spouse or a dependent child where the costs to us are significantly less than the choice that we have with the current plan. Um, otherwise, oh, and the other main, which is a, which is a big ticket, if, if one has children that require um, orthodonture, the, the plan with CDPHP covers orthodonture work or, or a portion of orthodonture expense, which is highly expensive. And the current plan we have covers none. So there are pros and cons, and Harry and Brenda and I have looked at this. I have the two contracts that um, will be available for you to, to review even further. I did, a, I did a, uh, the best I could today in comparisons. And in fact, what we're looking at is a good representation. The good news to the town and the taxpayers is that if we make this decision to change um, from Guardian Dental to CDPHP Dental, which is called, uh, they, they have a contractor called um, Delta Dental, the town saves $7,331. So, that's a substantial savings overall in one given year. We need to make a decision about this tonight. If we cannot decide to make this change and we do not notify Guardian that we are withdrawing from that program, it will automatically renew. So I would like to propose to you that we do notify Guardian that their that we have decided to try a new dental plan and move forward with the CDPHP dental plan, which we had before us. And I shall move. Thank you, Brenda. I second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Oh, there's, there's one. No, no. <laughs> We've already discussed yeah. this at great length. And, okay. And I've looked at it. Uh, it looks like a Okay. And just the right thing to One do. One of the things I liked that I forgot to mention is that dependent age students need not be full-time students. They only need to be 26. So that was also a, a very good um, benefit for people who have children of that age but are not full-time students. So we think it's a good change and um, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Of course, but um, is it only in network providers? Do they have their own network? There are both. Providers? There are both. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And they, they appear to be very close okay. in in payment. So okay. yeah, it, it looks it looks really good. And thank you for asking asking that. Um, before we get into reports, I'd like to invite to the microphone. Um, a person who is very much involved in our Northern Duchess uh, uh, television, public access television, um, Daniel Maloney is Daniel is is running the nuts and bolts of the office of Panda, and she's agreed to come tonight and talk to us about what's available on Panda, and if you have an organization that might wish to contract with Panda to have a program um, that would be available or possible through Danielle. So welcome. Thank you for coming, Danielle. Step right up to the mic so everybody can see you. Is, is Marianne going to join you? She's going to introduce you. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Marianne. And the board, because Danielle is just way too modest about her talents, and we are so grateful that we are the recipients of those talents, but she her education is in media, um, with a, an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree in television and the communication arts, and she's had lots of experience in television and radio, and uh, in project management, promotion, uh, a, a, a great many things that we always feel badly that we can't compensate her for her talents. She is willing to accept what 
we have to offer a salary. And with that, here's our Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Marianne is the town's representative to Panda and the treasurer of Panda, I might add. Thank you, Marianne. Um, there's a couple things that I wanted to talk to the board and to the public about tonight. So I just want to get the basic stuff out there and be as quick as possible. Um, our hours of operation um, for walk-in appointments, I'm always in the office unless I have a meeting, which is very rare, between 11 and 4 p.m., but I'm generally there from 10 to 6, Monday through Friday. Um, I wanted to also speak about what we do for the community. Um, we are willing to have people come in. You don't have to know anything about media or broadcasting or television, and you can come in and I can teach you everything you want to learn. Um, we offer support if you're having issues, if you're trying to work with a camera or with editing software and you can't figure something out, you can always call Panda, and I would be more than happy to help people out with that as well. Um, and we also loan out equipment for people who are interested, um, whether it's taping a local event, or if there's a play or something that they have permission to tape, they can always tape for us. Um, the only thing we ask for in return is we get a copy of whatever they wind up producing to air. Um, so with that said, um, since the beginning of the year, um, not including our monthly or twice monthly um, board meetings from our five municipalities, we've gotten 230 submissions which is probably a record high for Panda. Um, we have a lot of new programs that people are really excited about. We've been running a show um, by a gentleman named Alan, who uh, I think it's Alan Green, Greenberg. Um, he goes to Italy three to four times a year, gets a slew of footage, and ends up editing them down to our programs called Alan's Italy. Um, we've recently been taping um, for a woman who is an author slash uh, just kind of like promoting events coordinator. She does a lot of things. Her name is Joanne Michaels. Um, I actually do the production for her show we did today. We shot three shows in studio. Um, that show is called Citizen Joe, and we deal with a lot of local people. Um, we've had Vladimir Feltzman on, who is a world-renowned concert pianist. Um, we had a gentleman today named Stephen Cherney, um, who's a family entertainer slash ventriloquist. Um, we've had many other people. Elliot Arbach, who is the Ulster County Comptroller. Um, pretty much anybody who will respond and wants to interview, we, we'll, we'll do a show with them. So if any, anybody's interested, you can also contact me about that, and I can put them into touch, uh, in touch with Joanne. Another program that we do in-house is called Reverse Painting on Glass, which is kind of like a Bob Ross show um, with a local artist, Mary, Mary Beth Blum Tootin is her name. She's out of Tivoli. I do a show, um, some of you may have seen it. It's called Homegrown Cooking, where I raid my um, friend's garden and whatever I can get, I whip up a recipe for. Um, sometimes I go a little outside of that. I think my last episode, I made coconut shrimp and homemade vanilla ice cream, so <laughs> obviously none of that came from the garden. Um, also, the Rembeck Center for Performing Arts, I uh, do production for them outside of Panda, which airs on Panda, called Live at the Center, and that's a monthly program. We also have had um, our former treasurer, Susan, Susan Simon, I'm sorry, Susan, <laughs> um, she um, submits a program called The Swing Shift, which is a really great program about dancing and people enjoying swing dancing in particular. The Rhinebeck Historical Society, um, they do a monthly talk, and they um, give that to us. John Vincent tapes that for us. I generally have my volunteers slash interns tape the Tivoli Bays talks that occur um, through the DEC, um, but they happen in Tivoli, so we get those, and that's usually once a month. Um, and I get a ton of religious pro programming, um, usually aired on Sundays. Um, and not to mention the community events and parades and stuff that I try to get to on the weekend to get footage of, or we have a couple of people who are good about turning that stuff in. John Vincent's one of them, Kathy O'Connor. Um, those are the, the big two that definitely get most of that programming to us. Um, I work a lot with the local nonprofits. I've uh, done both uh, uh, excuse me, promotions, public service amount, announcements for Red Hook Can, um, Red Hook Together, the Red Hook Education Foundation. 
and I work closely with the BART Center for Civic Engagement and Aaron Canan there. And anything I can do to help out those organizations, they, they know when to call me, they know I'll show up at their events and take things for them on the arm because I'm really into Red Hook and all the great things that you guys do here. Um, I run a volunteer slash internship programming, uh, program, excuse me, depending on where you are in life. If you're in high school, you don't get credit, so you're a volunteer, but if you go to college, you can get college credit, so you can become an intern. I generally get three interns a semester, which is actually pretty good, um, and they help. They help a lot, um, and it's really good because I get to help them refine their um, TV and radio skills because they can ask me questions about radio, too, that I can usually answer. Um, I wanted to go over a few updates of some of the things that have changed since I um, took command at the station. Um, we've updated some equipment. Um, we're trying to move forward into the HD world. We'll see what happens. We uh, provided that time where cable will give us a high definition channel. Um, we've upgraded our editing software to the newest Final Cut, which is had quite a learning curve, but I've got it down now, and it's actually a lot of fun to use. Um, we've gotten new lighting, um, and our um, our chair, Dana Weidman, um, the chair of the board Panda, donated her time to paint the studio. One day she came in and painted the, our studio corner. So it acts as A, a nice background, or B, a green screen, So, which is cool because you can put like fun stuff up on the, on the back wall. Um, and that's just, that's just some, of the, some of the things that I jotted down. We have done a lot of things. Our, our board works together really closely. We get along very well. We really, really like each other. And I think that we really um, raised the bar for Panda in general um, with, the, well, how many are there? Five, with the six of us. And then we also have alternates too for all the municipalities. Um, so they're very helpful as well. Um, we built a new website. I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance to check it out, but you should definitely do it in your free time. Um, it's www.pandatv23.org. We have all of your meetings archived, um, which is very time consuming, believe it or not, because when we get the discs from our cameramen, we have to rip them. Sometimes we have to do some editing to them, and then we have to upload them to the internet, which, you know, one two hour meeting can end up taking a whole day, which will be a side project while I'm doing my regular job. But um, it's categorized under our archives by the municipalities. I also have general programming there, which would include most of the programs that I mentioned before. And the Red Hook Histor uh, excuse me, the Rhinebeck Historical Society also has um, a section there because they just give us so much stuff. Um, let me see. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is your most current meetings are always on the home page now. You used to have to search. Um, now, when you go right to our website, they're um, organized by date, and you can find the most current municipality meeting right there on our on our front page, which is kind of cool. Um, my, um, I, I had a technical advisor. He started out as a in, as an intern and um, became a technical advisor because he was really really bright. His name was Matt Lynch. Um, he left us um, temporarily. He's in college right now, but him and I had sat down and designed the website, and we hired an outside guy who gave us a really good deal to do it for us, and uh, we love it. So please do check it out when you get a chance. And I also wanted to mention that we do have the community calendar. So anybody who has any events whatsoever, whether there's a charge or they're free or, you know, it's it's religious um, dinner, you know, at a church or whatever it may be, you can send it to us. Um, I do have a woman who helps me do some administrative tasks. Um, she used to help, uh, she's the one who trained me, in fact. Um, Chris, she is, um, can be reached at calendar at pandatv23.org. You can send anything you need to her as far as events are concerned, and she'll make sure that they make it up on our community calendar, which rotates throughout our programming, and after each board meeting, you can catch the entire run through as well. Um, that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to open the floor to see if anybody had any questions that they wanted to ask me from the board or from the audience. <laughs> We from time to time have, <clears throat> excuse me, we from time to time have um, opportunities to get involved in uh, community-wide programs that, that require us to do some um, 
polling of the community or um, contacting the community for their support. And it, it, it would not be a problem for us to put something up asking for feedback from the community on things like Red Hook Challenge um, or we could, any, um, any of the energy, any energy programs that we've had. Um, I have worked with um, Nice Serta in the past. They gave me a bunch of cute little videos to air um, last year. Um, so if there's something pre-produced, it definitely should be turned into me. Um, if, if, if that's not the case, um, you could come down to our studio, record um, a public service announcement to reach out to people. Um, we could also add it to our community calendar because other than events, things like that would go in there. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a number of things that I would be able to do to help you out with that, and that's definitely not a problem. I'll make sure to give you a card before I go so you have my email address. Good. Anybody? Brenda? Any questions? I can't think of anything. I, I know we've worked with you with the 10% challenge before, and that we, you've been very responsive when we put up some composting videos. And, uh, well, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I watch that so, a lot. I compost, so <laughs> thank you for your help. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And and just by way of, I'm sorry. I also wanted to make an announcement. We are having our annual meeting, which airs live. Um, uh, Dan Bud um, from Taste Buds is um, kind enough to be our sponsor, um, and he's going to be providing the food. It's uh, Wednesday, October 9th. The Come on down to our studio in Tivoli, uh, 6 Montgomery Street, for people who don't know. It's open to anybody on the board, anybody in the public. Um, we have food, wine, you know, coffee, um, treats from Taste Buds um, at 7 o'clock. The meeting will start at about 7.30. We do run live that night, which is the only time of year we go live, so I don't have that much familiarity with it. But, um, so it might, you know, give or take a few minutes, but definitely, if everybody's free, I would like for everybody to come down and get some food and mingle. Thank you. 7 <laughs> o'clock, right. then. 7 o'clock. The meeting will start around 7.30. Here we so go. So you have some time to get there. Okay, great. All great. right, thank you. And I wanted to introduce one other person who is our alternate representative to Panda, who is Mark Durand, who came tonight. Mark, we thank you for your service and your willingness to um, give support to this worthwhile partnership that we have throughout the community. Well, thank well, you. Well, thank you, Sue. Uh, you know, I'm a strong believer in Panda, and I'm very happy with how the new board has carried through and all the work that Danielle has done. And uh, I'm particularly happy with all the support that you've given us. We really thank you for that. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And, and what I heard from you, uh, Danielle, is you're looking for HD equipment from Time Warner. Um, an HD, I, ha I have a camera. I could use a second one because most professional shoots are at least two cameras. Mm -hmm. um, but before any of that, they would have to provide us with an HD channel first. HD channel, okay. HD channel, okay. Just need to know what we're asking for. Would that change the address of the of the channel you have now? Now you have this twenty dash mm -hmm. two. Oh. Would, yeah. would it be then go back to 23? Maybe? That's a little bit of a hang up. It would actually, um, I'm, I actually don't, I'm, I'm not a, in a Time Warner cable area. I actually don't have cable at all. But at my parents' house, that most of their channels that would be like on Channel 4 or Channel 2 or, or mm -hmm. Fox are like 702, 704, mm -hmm. 705. So I would be hoping it would be 723. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I have home. Is I have an HD set up and it's 723. Right. And do you see Panda on 720? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, okay. I, I get it as well. Interesting. I'll have to look into that because I know our equipment in office isn't, it's still on standard definition. It's not high definition. If they gave us the channel, we would probably have to purchase some you equipment do, to stay you, on the same level. You do have to have a cable box, even with an HD set, to get it on 723. Right. I have another HD set um, without a cable box in it. I have to get it on 20-2 on that one. I wish but uh, but on, a, on, on an older set, you just can't get it. Right. Some people can if they went and, and purchased, well, it was free until 2015. It's a digital adapter. 
And in that case, if you plug that in, it'll come back to channel I did do 23. that briefly and decided I'd rather have a new TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all three for coming and for bringing the public's attention to Panda because you really do have great programming and it's a wonderful opportunity, especially for not-for-profits who are looking for ways to get their mission out to the public. People don't know what's going on and, and the more we can talk it up and say, here's what's available right here to spread the word. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your coming. And we will be there. I think we'll be there. <laughs> okay. So... That pretty much covers what we had, except for reports. So if we could swing right into reports. Um, I'm sure you've noticed by now that Councilman Ross and O'Neill are not with us tonight. <coughs> and typically, uh, Brenda, would you give the planning board report? Do you have that? Yes, it's very short. They had one meeting this month. Uh, they reviewed the resubmission for the major subdivision known as Anderson Commons and reviewed the reviewed the site plan applications for a diner on South Broadway and a residential daycare on Lasher Road in Tivoli. Thank you, Brenda. Mm -hmm. And you have the Zoning Board of Appeals as well? I do. Uh, they actually had, um, a couple, they had a lively meeting. Uh, they did a public <coughs> hearing on a property uh, <coughs> that was related to the installation of a photovoltaic array and it had to do with the location of accessory structures and I believe some of the um, some of the poles were on the neighboring property and then they heard two reviews. One was in reference to the placement of uh, two sheds. The applicants wanted a variance related to um, the amount of building coverage they were permitted and the second review was related to the placement of a carport in the hamlet and uh, the applicant wishing to have a variance from the side yard setback. Okay. That was, is that all one meeting? No, it's two meetings. Uh, one meeting. Oh, okay. Do you have the report for September 24th? Or was that it? That, one, that was it. That that was it. Uh, September. Yeah, that was a, just the 20th. The second one meeting in September, and it was the 24th. Mm -hmm. And um, th there was mention about Bruce and Odell Chilton. That was the um, setback placement of the carport. Oh, okay. In, Got in it. Dale okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There is a report from the assessor's office. Um, well, first, I guess I should ask you, Brenda, if, while you're on a roll, would you do the animal control officer? I don't have that one from her, okay. but I do know that she had a very active month, and as a result, we had two dogs that were declared dangerous. <clears throat> so. Yes, and, and I would just like to say that that um, it is important for residents to understand how necessary it is for us to get all dogs licensed. That I, I guess there is an exemption for farm dogs that stay on farms. Is that true? Dogs or farm dogs may not necessarily they they have, have to, to be licensed. Right. But otherwise, all, all, all dogs, dogs at the age of four months. Four months and up, mm -hmm. and and when abroad need to be on a leash, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. So I think it's really important to, to and make the community aware. We all tend to put things off, but that's a very important thing, and it should apply to everyone. Okay, I have the assessor's report who says, um, and welcome to Victoria from New York State Orps, uh, and their willingness to prevent the STAR registration. They've pulled information regarding the STAR program up on the web website, so you can find it there on the town website. They're c currently preparing defense of small claims at the end of October, and he's thus far documented and reviewed most of the properties on the roll and have fewer than 150 properties left, which include municipal-owned properties. In addition to these properties, we are receiving sales information and making appropriate changes. These reviews are essential for upcoming valuation process. 
um, and he will continue working on the valuation process for the 2014 role reappraisal. So that is Scott Hobson, our assessor, and Christine Shaw was with us. I have no attorney's report. Rose Ryder, and, as budget officer, has been working diligently with department heads on department budgets, and they have all been submitted. She's been meeting with Deb Cohn and Supervisor Crane to finalize the supervisor's tentative budget, and that is due to be filed at the town clerks on Monday the 30th, I believe. And I think we're almost there for the first for the first go round. So it's it's um, to say it's a challenge in this environment is an understatement. But we're doing the best we can. Um, we have a report from our building inspector Steve Cole, who um, had 19 permits for the month of September. Um, there were 51 inspections, total inspections. And they are all over Red Hook and Tivoli. Um, he has a total of certificates of occupancy, 14. And those are itemized in this report. And complaints, there were a number. And let's see what the number on that is. Um, seven. And in terms of searches, he had five title searches and an, an amount of permit fee of $4,819. The total amount of per permit fees were $4,319, and I think the, the searches were the additional $500. So that explains his report. I know he's been really, really busy. And Bob has been there <coughs> as well on a very part-time basis, and we thank them both. Um, the Red Hook Police Department has given us a report for the month of August, and that report this is some number right here. Yeah. The total incidents were 72 for the reporting period of the month of August. There were eight arrests and 52 tickets issued. Mm -hmm. The Dutchess County Sheriff's Office also has reported uh, the total incidents for the month were 91. And they are everything from traffic offenses to road hazards to noise complaints and so on. So that is our police coverage for the month of August. Um, the Water District, Jim is generally the one to give this. Uh, I'll try. For the month of July, the monthly report, we had um, the water pump Pumped normally, normally is 80 um, gallons per, per minute, is it? 1,000 gallons per, per, thousand day. Gallons per, per day. Sorry, 80,000 gallons per day. And in July, we pumped 83. The well levels feet above water of the pump is normally 54. It remained at 54. Well, two is 42. It, the normal is 42, and it was higher at 47. No chloroform detected, turbidity was under the required uh, reporting number. Chlorine residual, parts per million was okay. The filters were acting, were, were operating satisfactorily. The chlorine was received and um, in July and it seems okay. There were work orders, one outstanding work order. Uh, they planned plumbing at the pump house, plumbing work, replacing an old main piping inside the pump. 
And we need new valves in Manor and Colonial, especially between Aspen and Trow Boulevard. The pump house buildings need repair. Clearing around the fences at the pump house and tank needs to be done, and they'll take care of that. The easement from Alby over to Thayer needs to be cleared. Water meters and remote registers that are current that we currently use are no longer available, so new me new meters must be lead free. Um, and they all require some type of remote wireless sensing. They have enough meters and registers for several months, and we'll wait until the stock is down before ordering the new. Um, and our water um, corporation that serves our water department will replace a riser for the hydrant shutoff on the valve of Beach and Alby. There was vandalism at the storage tank, uh, spray painting, defacing the tank. It was reported to the state police. Poison ivy was sprayed. Um, some discussion about the Catlin's uh, request, which appeared here tonight. And we will move forward with that um, discussion in, in a later town board meeting. Sand and water in at uh, Cornell Avenue, and apparently that happened last year also. So our Water Service Corporation will flush the service line. They think a water softener might help the situation, and the homeowner does not have one. They're recommending that. You need to develop a hydrant checklist and paint numbers on each street hydrant, street by street. Um, pretty much no. There is a curb stop broken again, and the question is how it continues. This is not the first time. It was broken in 2011. And so that is for the month of July, and August is very similar in, in report. Um, there is nothing really in the report that's outstanding or unusual, as best I can tell. The chlorine residual looked a little up in August. Uh-huh. Bard will be using our water for approximately one week, and um, Mark Bryce of Bard contacted them on se September 11th. So other than the issues discussed, I think it looks he talks about needing, maybe needing to change rules and regulations considering allowing plastic service pipes. So they're, they're anticipating that request from us. Mm -hmm. And that's all we have on the water department. Now in terms of um, reports from committees, does somebody want to take a shot at the Ag and Open Space Committee report? Do you have that, Brenda? I don't. I have something. Do yeah. you? Would you do that for Bill's? Pardon? Would you do that for Bill's? I think that's Bill's ordinary. It is Bill's, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they, they, really, they didn't have a, uh, uh, a meeting in September. Um, and uh, they did have a meeting in August. They're asking for, uh, for us, so the... Uh, uh, the ZBA to review the ag fencing issue, which we have not ever quite resolved um, in terms of the zoning uh, controls of that as, as the fencing relates to the uh, agricultural areas. Um, Would that be the ZRC? Uh, well, they have it, he has it listed here as okay. ZBA. Okay. <laughs> Pete Hubble, uh, I'm reading his report. Right. Um, um, but it's probably, I think you're right, it is the Zoning, zoning Review Committee. Um, otherwise, there were kind of business, business as usual. The fellow farm was requesting some changes 
that was denied by the planning board, um, and they were somewhat involved in that. Ag assessments are increasing because of commodity prices, which is news to me, but mm -hmm. um, I guess that's it. no surprise. If you're more successful, the assessments go up. Um, and basically that's it. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Um, you also could report on the working group, the working intermunicipal. Group. Bill, Bill has two reports here. Um, having been to all these meetings myself, uh, in the August, uh, August we're essentially we had received a new Greenway grant of seventy-five hundred dollars to continue the work of reviewing, essentially reviewing zoning and and filling out some of the zoning that we never completed. Uh, that would be in addition to the centers and green phase, um, space zoning we passed two years ago, and the additions would be details having to do with the traditional neighborhood area, and would, that we see, received a grant for that purpose. Um, and we're also working on with the road specifications in the TND, which are different than the town-wide road specifications as they exist today. And you can imagine we don't have highways in a, in a traditional neighborhood. The, the roads there will be more like the village-scale roads. Um, and in the September report, um, we have moved forward and are moving forward with the uh, historic landmark district overlay and zoning that, that would apply to that, um, which was uh, in, which is in addition to the centers and green space and had been on the agenda from quite a long time before we even did the centers and green space. So we are moving forward with that and Bill addresses both of those issues in these reports. Good. Thank you. Um, just wanted to mention a word of thanks to uh, Dick Franklin, who attended the recent Hard Scrabble Day and handed out additional, more than 100, I think, pamphlets for um, the disaster preparedness pamphlets that he, that he um, developed. And they were snapped up and very, we're very grateful to him for making those available. Um, Brenda, do you, would you like to give the senior services? Uh, sure, this is from uh, Chairman Andrew Kerr. He says, um, the committee just had our first meeting after the summer hiatus. We know some bullet points of what we're attempting to address on our agenda. Uh, first is the Give a Child a Summer Meal Food Drive, which was held in June of this year, was a major success. The food drive purchased, focused on non-perishable food items to be donated to the Northern Duchess Community Action in Red Hook. These donations were for the benefit of students who attend schools in the Red Hook School District who normally receive some form of subsidized meal plans during the school year, however would be without them during the summertime. Thanks to the entire community for their generous outpouring of support. And uh, they'll be focusing on a, during the next several months on uh, following up with the <coughs> alternate transportation plans for seniors to facilitate shopping and marketing in the community. They will analyze further the Rhinebeck at Home program and determine how this can meet the needs of seniors in our community. They will sponsor a talk uh, given by the county sheriff's office or the Red Hook Police Department focusing on the topic of safety for seniors. And they will update their um, news brochure that's for Red Hook seniors. So they've been, they'll be very busy. Great, thank you very much. Does anyone have anything on trails? They, I know. No. On trails? Trails, uh, yeah. They met and discussed the budget, and there were only two attendees. Okay. <clears throat> um, the rec committee. Harry, you have that one? Yeah, there's a very lengthy report here. Mm -hmm. I believe I know about it, enough about it so I could summarize. Good. There's a lot of work being done in the maintenance buildings as, as the year goes on. Uh, wear and tear over there uh, shows up and shows its ugly head. So there's work being done there. Um, one of the issues that I'm sure the public wants to know about, there are some of the trees and the limbs on trees in the playground area and above the heads of the children are there were, became a little problematic. 
So John made a very concerted effort to get anything that looked like it was the least bit weak uh, out, out from above where people will be. Uh, there's been, as I say, a lot of work being done in the maintenance area. Uh, the Girl Scouts had donated a swing for handicapped uh, youngsters, and that was installed uh, a couple of weeks ago. The Girl Scouts did the fundraising and helped with that project. So the program was very successful, uh, as, as usual. Um, can't begin to guess the number of kids. It's very variable from day to day. Um, and otherwise, I think in addition to that, uh, what I have have to cover here mostly has to do with maintenance. Of the, mm -hmm. the leagues over the summer were very prolific, and the baseball games never stopped. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're going on as we speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's they're, they're busier than ever up there right yep. now with all the <clears throat> the high school and junior high school activities. Thank you, Harry. I have nothing else that I can think of regarding the other committees. Um, I did want to mention that I talked with Nancy, um, Nancy of the Tree Committee. Gusky. Gusky, thank you. And she um, talked with me about replacing the dogwood that uh, was placed out here in honor of Cecil Moore and has agreed to find a, a new tree for that planting. Uh, that intense heat we had in July of this mm -hmm. year, I think, was cause for the demise of that tree, but we wanted to make sure that everyone knew we intend to replace that tree. And both um, her, her committee and the CAC had a strong presence on Hard Scrabble Day. Thanks to them. Good. And the dog park had a lot of action on, was it Hard Scrabble Day? They had a big volunteer effort over the weekend. They're making great progress. And um, Paul Piastro and Bruce Washburn heading that up with their volunteers. And uh, I think the target date now for opening is the end of October. Puppies are waiting very <laughs> impatiently. Yeah, they're very excited. Mm -hmm. The terrain there is difficult. It's, it's a lot of shale, I guess, and, oh, yeah. and uh, so it's, it's mm -hmm. not easy to mount the fence post, but they're working hard on it, and Paul's very excited, so it's great. That's all I have. Has anyone anything else? Is there any further public comment? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? It's so moved. A second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.